Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endure forever. We praise you, Father, this morning. We magnify and glorify your holy name. For you alone are worthy to be praised, and there's nobody like you. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that you are our Lord. So we want to tell you this morning that we love you, we appreciate you, we adore you, because there's just nobody like you, God. So we invite you here this morning. Have thine own way. Move by your spirit, Father. In the name of Jesus, heal, deliver, save, and set free. Anoint your man servant this morning as he bring forth the word of God. Anoint your Judah singers that we sing unto you, Father. Anoint your musicians that they play skillfully for you. In the name of Jesus. And we be so careful to give your name the praise. In Jesus' name, amen.
Brothers and sisters, we greet you on this Lord's Day on May the 16th, Sunday. We thank God for this opportunity and this privilege just to get together again around God's anointed and powerful word. Would you turn with me in your Bible to Daniel chapter 12? Daniel chapter 12, the book of the prophet Daniel, the 12th chapter, the final chapter in this prophecy of Daniel. Hope you've had an opportunity to read this chapter after we gave you the assignment. It will greatly bless you if you have. The book of Daniel, the book of the prophet Daniel, chapter 12. And go down, if you will, to verse 7. Daniel, chapter 12, verse 7 giving you a moment so you can find it. Daniel chapter 12 and verse 7. Daniel chapter 12 verse 7. The word of the Lord reads like this. Daniel chapter 12 verse 7. And I heard the man clothed in linen which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever, that it shall be for a time, times and a half, and when he shall accomplish to scatter the power of the holy people, and all these things shall be finished. Verse 8. And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he saith, he saith, go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed to the time of the end. Many shall be purified and made white and tried but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Go back if you will. I want to put emphasis and get our subject from verse 9. Verse 9 says, And he said, Go thy way, Daniel. For the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. I want to pick up those first few words in verse 9. And he said, go thy way. That's our subject. He said, go thy way. The whole Bible is about Jesus, and the whole Bible points toward Jesus. Jesus is the center and circumference of this entire 66 books. But basically, when it comes down to end times, when it comes down to deep prophecy, 
Uh, there are basically three writings in the Bible that deal specifically with prophecy and uh, or the end times, I'll say it that way. Three books that deal with the end times. One of those is the book of Daniel. Uh, another is in Matthew chapter 25. And then of course the entire book of Revelations. That's the entire book of Daniel. The 25th chapter of the gospel is recorded by Matthew and the book of Revelations. If you want to get Revelation on end times, the latter days, you could read those three writings in the Bible. Now, all of them make something real plain and real clear. All of them clearly state that the end times will be a time of chaos and the end times will be a time of mass confusion. So one of the great characteristics toward the end times is chaos and confusion. I thought of this and the Lord brought it to my attention as, as over the past several days we've watched the chaos that the gas situation has caused this past week. And uh, it's very interesting because the gas situation caught most of us totally by surprise. And I want to tell you, even though we read prophetic utterances in the Bible, you're not going to know everything that's going to happen. You will be able to discern the seasons but, and the times, but you won't know every little detail of what's going to happen. Daniel talks about this, but I thought about it. Uh, I was out yesterday morning, Saturday, and I passed by two gas stations and saw long lines and heard, saw people arguing and fussing about their place in line. And so we see chaos. Uh, we see confusion in this uh, everywhere this gas situation has happened. Now, now, this chapter of the book of Daniel, which is at the end of his prophecy, so this is kind of a summation, this chapter of Daniel pull, pulls back the curtain and is really talking about the great tribulation. Now, there's a lot of things we could say from the book of Daniel. We could talk about the tribulation. We could talk about Daniel's weeks. Uh, you know, we can talk about the Antichrist. There are a lot of things prophesied, foretold in this prophecy. But I want to get to something that's very current. And I don't believe that we're in the Great Tribulation yet. It's one thing that's got to happen is the Antichrist is going to have to be revealed. And I don't want to make this too technical because there's a practical message in this writing in this 12th chapter. Because one of the things that the Lord reveals in this 12th chapter is that the Lord has revealed some things about end times, but he doesn't reveal everything. And this is, this is a, the, the way we've got to be fortified in knowing that there are going to be some surprising things that's going to happen in this end times. Let's let the word talk. Verse 8 says, look at verse 8. Verse 8 says, And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O Lord, what shall be the end of these things? Listen to the response to the question. And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. So there are going to be some things, my brothers and my sisters, that's going to happen that we don't know. There'll be some mornings we wake up and we're going to see some surprises on newscasts and we're going to hear some things that we had never heard. But the Lord tells Daniel and this is what the practicality of this message for today is in these end times. The Lord tells Daniel 
what to do. And in the interim, he tells us what we need to do. And that's why this word is so timely. Not only does he tell Daniel what he needs to do, but he tells us. And I want to read this from the Message Bible, these same two verses, 8 and 9. If you have a message translation, you can get to it quickly. Turn, But if not, just listen real carefully. I'm going to try to read it plain. Uh, verse 8 and 9 from the message translation says this. Listen, verse 8. I heard all this plainly enough, but I didn't understand it. So I asked, Master, can you explain this to me. Now listen to the response because this is our subject. The response is from the Message Bible verse 9 go on about your business Daniel he said the message is confidential and under lock and key until the end until things are about to be wrapped up. Now here's what go thy way means and that's what the Lord says to us today as, as we see surprising even things that could be fearful coming upon the earth. The Lord says, go your way. Go your way. And you can put your name where Daniel's is. Go your way, Anthony. Go your way, Della. Go your way, whoever you are. Put your, put your name right in there. Go your way. Go your way means don't sit around and be afraid of things you see beginning to happen in the earth. Because we already know the times and the seasons. We know the scripture has told us there are going to be some fearful things going on in the earth. Go your way means don't sit around and be afraid as you see these things happening. The message Bible says, go on about your business. Go on about your business. And then he lets us know that some things are sealed up. Some things are sealed up. You know, I think a lot of times not everybody, but some people sit around and they just kind of wonder well, and try to figure out what's going to happen next and what's going to be this and what's going to be that. And see, you, 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 you can't know everything. There's some things God has sealed up, see. So what we got to understand is we got to go on about our business. We got to go on about the business of living. Now, I don't mean go about the business of sinning. I mean go about the business of living. Don't sit around afraid. Uh, to live. Don't sit around afraid uh, to enjoy your family, your life. You know, don't sit around. He gives us richly all things to enjoy. Just don't sit around scared and wondering, well, what's going to happen tomorrow? And what's going what's to happen next? Let me tell you something. You don't know what's going to happen next. I don't know what's going to happen next. But, but the Lord knows and the Lord knows us. Verse 10 tells us what's going to be happening during the tribulation, because this is what Daniel's talking about, the great tribulation. But as he writes this, he's also telling us what's happening right now. So you're going to get a glimpse now of what's going on right now as this message is going forth. All right, look at verse 10. I'm back in the King James Bible. Here, this is what's happening right this minute. It says, many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And see, Jesus Christ has been made unto us wisdom. So, so we understand that we're in the latter days. We understand that there are going to be some things happening in the earth that we are not aware of. We understand. It says many are going to be purified. Many are going to be made white and tried. But the wicked shall do wickedly. And none of the wicked shall understand. But the wise shall understand. Let me read verse 10 to you. From the Amplified Version. So we can get a clear understanding. Verse 10 from the Amplified Bible says. Many shall purify themselves. And make themselves white. And be tried, smelted, and refined. So, so some people during this day are going to see what's going on. And the Lord's going to draw them to himself. And they're going to respond to the call. While all, this, all these things are going on, many folks are going to be saved. That's what that's talking about. There's going to be some people that's going to be saved. And then they're going to, there's some saved people who are going to stay saved. 
because they understand that these occurrences are not natural. These occurrences are supernatural. These occurrences are coming to a, a big climax. Things are building. Things are happening. And, and this is not, and so, so a lot of people are going to run to God and be saved. And that's good. Many are going to be saved. Amplified Bible says many shall purify themselves and make themselves white, be tried, smelted, and refined. Many of us who are already saved now, because of what we see going on around us, we're being refined. We are, we are getting some of the junk out of our life. We're getting the little small sins out of our life, those easily besetting sins. We understand this is a time now to get right with God. We understand what's going on. But then he says, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand. None of the wicked. So, so sometimes you wonder as a saved person and Holy Spirit gives you insight and revelation and helps you to see what's really going on. You understand, well, what's wrong with folk that they can't see? I can tell you, the devil has blinded the minds of those that believe not. That's what the Bible says. They, he's blinded their minds. So wicked folks are going around, and I'm talking about sinners, people who have a lifestyle of sin. They're going around sinning like nothing's happening. Like, and you know why? Because they can't see. They're blind. And we got to pray that the light will be shown to them. We got to pray that we can share the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ so it can shine under them and they can be enlightened and they can be saved. So the wicked, and, and it seems like there's some people now, even though all that's going on, the pandemic, and let's just call it what the Bible calls it, a plague. It's a plague. The plague has been going on in the earth. Right now in Israel, they're fighting. I know they fought before, and I know they've had peace treaties before, and they always get a peace treaty. But, but this is really, really kind of tough now when they're talking about putting ground troops on the ground. And see, see now, so, so all this is going on, and now people are deciding that we want to turn up. We want to we want to sin harder. We want to go harder, and we want to just go out and and do all we can do that's wicked. And then and it's like righteous folk looking like, what's wrong with y'all? And I'm telling you what's wrong with, with with them. They cannot see. And then there are some saved folk who will not sit under the refiner's fire of God. You know the Bible says God says I'm a consuming fire, and the law says I'm going to I'm going to purify my sons. And so there are many of us who are going through purification. We are, we are not blind. We are separating ourselves from sin and sinners. We are separating ourselves from very, the very, this is what I'm going to say, the very appearance of evil. See, the very appearance of it. We are separating ourselves, sanctifying ourselves, purifying ourselves, allowing the sanctification work of God to set us apart. We are coming to the place of holiness. Holiness means we're different. We're different than other people. We're different than the world. We're letting God purify us through the fire of the Holy Ghost. Because we know these are not natural times. We know something's going on that's, that, that's behind the veil where people can't see. Because he's given us revelation to his word. We know the times and the seasons. We know it's no time now to live loose. It's time now to live holy for God. And we can see all these things going on in the earth and we know it. So it says, he says, I'm going to read it again. It says, many shall be purified. Amplified Bible says, many shall purify themselves. See, purify themselves. And that's what time it is now, church. It's time to purify yourself. And Holy Spirit will help you. Lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us. Purify themselves. We, they purify themselves and make themselves white. That's through the blood of Jesus Christ. Be tried, smelted, and refined. But the wicked, the wicked, look at this, the wicked shall do wickedly. And the Bible says evil men and seducers wear wax worse and worse. The wicked shall do wickedly. And none of the wicked shall understand. They won't even understand what's going on. They don't even understand what they're doing. The devil has blinded them through the, through the, through the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. But then it says in verse from the Amplified, but the teachers and those who are wise shall understand. The teachers, there are going to be some people, there are some pastors and preachers and evangelists and leaders in the church now who understand. They're preaching the full counsel of God. They're teaching the full counsel of God that now it's time to repent 
and turn to God because Jesus Christ will come quickly and you don't want to be left. So therefore, there are some people who do understand our teaching. And then there are many people who God has made wise through the word of God. And we understand what's going on. We can see what's going on. We have insight and revelation into the times and the seasons. But wicked people are going to continue to do wicked. The wicked will not understand, but those teachers and preachers of the true word of God and those who are wise shall understand. I wonder today, are you wise or are you foolish? Acting like the word of God is not true. But see, we're not in the dark. The Bible says we're children of the light. There are a lot of things I could say about this book of Daniel, this deep in prophecy, the abomination of desolation, the antichrist, great tribulation, Daniel's weeks, all that's in here. We could talk about all that. But as we see chaos, as we see chaos coming on the earth, surprising us, not knowing what evil and what new a day holds, here's what God wants us to know. Watch this. God says, go ahead on, go your way. Go your way. Don't sit around worried and understand and, 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 and like you don't understand. Go your way. Live your life. I'm talking about a holy, righteous life. Why can we do that? Because we know something. We know that God is in control. God's in control. I said God is in control. We know God's in control. That's the one thing we know. We, we know God's in control. Now, somebody will say, well, how, do you, how can you say God's in control with all this chaos and stuff that's going on, here's how you can say God's in control. Watch this. Because God is in control of my life. Sit up and say, God's in control of my life. See, when you got saved, you made Jesus the Lord of your life. He's the Lord of your life. That means he's your master. He's your controller. He's your ruler. He's your owner. So therefore, he may not be in control of all these wicked people going around what they're doing, but he's in control of my life. And therefore, I know that no matter what's going on around me, all things are going to work together for my good. Why? Because I love God, number one, and number two, because I am the called according to his purpose. And I don't care what's going on around me. I don't have to sit around holding my hand, scratching my head, pulling out my hair, because God is in control of my life. Say that with me. Say, God's in control of my life. Say it right where you say, God is in control of my life. No matter what happens, here's what we know. Here's what we know. No matter what happens in the earth, we know that we have the victory. We have the victory. Say that with me. Say, no matter what happens in this earth, I have the victory. Lift your hand and praise God right, right where you are. And not only do we have the victory, but see, we know how the story ends. See, we've, we, we've read the end of the book. We know how the story, so we, we're not sitting around we're not sitting around timid in the corner somewhere in the dark, scared what's going to happen? You know, scared you know, what, what are they going to attack next? They attack the gas, suppose they attack the power grid. And let me tell you something. Somehow, some way, God's going to get some light to his people. Well, suppose they attack the banks and you can't get your money. Somehow, some way, you know, David says, look, he said, I have been young, now I'm old, but one thing I have not seen, I have never seen the righteous forsaken or seed begging bread. I don't care if they attack the bank. I don't care if they lock up the computers at the bank. My God shall supply every last one of my needs according to his riches in glory. So we know how the story ends and see, we have a we have an inside witness. Everybody say about to have an inside witness. I say inside. You know God's in control. Why? Because you're a child of God. The spirit bears witness with your spirit that we are the children of God. And if we're children of God, the Bible says, then we're heirs of God. And joint heirs with Jesus Christ. If we suffer with him, we'll also be glorified together with him. See, we got an inside witness. I'm a child of God. I can go head on. I can go on my way. I ain't going to live my life. I don't care how much wickedness there's going on. I don't care how much turmoil. I don't care how much confusion. God says, go your way. Go your way. Don't sit around like you're worried and don't have a father in heaven. Go your way. The Bible says, behold, what man of love the father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons 
of God. Therefore, the world doesn't know us. Stop trying to be recognized by the world. Stop trying to hang with the world. Stop trying to be worldly. The world doesn't recognize you. They're blind. They don't understand what's going on. The world knoweth us not, the scripture says, because it knew not him. Beloved, now we are the sons of God. It doth not yet appear what we shall be. See, because some things are sealed up. We don't know everything. But we do know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And then the Bible says that every man that has this hope purifies himself, even as he is pure. No time to be polluting yourself. It's a time now to be purifying yourself, even as he is pure. He said, I'm holy, you be holy in all manner of lifestyle, all manner of conversation." Are you hearing me? Then the Bible says there's no time to take down or take back or hush up. The Bible says, whoever shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. There's no time now to let back on your confession. Put it out there. I'm saved. That's right. I'm saved. Through all these storms of this life, I'm going to keep right on saying I am saved. Ain't nobody going to shut me up. Because I'm saved by, my, by the word of my testimony, I overcome by the blood of the Lamb, the word of my testimony. I'm not going to let go. I'm going to hold fast to my confession of faith. Because he is faithful. He's faithful that promised. So I'm going to confess him before men. I'm going to confess him before men. Some people come by my page, you always put on Facebook about Jesus. Well, you need to block me or, or delete me. Because that's why I'm, part of the reason I'm up here is to preach. Are you hearing me? And every other social media I'm on. That's why I'm up here. See, I'm not up here to show you my food and show you my vacation. I'm up here to show you Jesus. That's why I'm up here. And, and, and all of us ought to be confessing him. The darker it gets, the more we ought to let our light shine. The more confusion that hits the world. Because we have a responsibility to show people who are not saved the way of salvation. So the Bible says, go and live your life. He said, you know what? What's, is there any word from the Lord from the day past? Yeah, he said, go your way. That's what he said. Go your way. Don't sit around. God hadn't given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. That's why he's given us. Don't just sit around timid, afraid. Are you hearing me? Go your way. Take care of your business. Take care of your business. And part of your business is the kingdom, that's the biggest part. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things shall be added unto you. At a time when Jesus was coming to maturity, he was with his family and they looked for him. He was gone. He said, don't you know, I got to be about my father's business. You know what time it is now, child of God? It's time to be about your father's business. That's what time it is now. No time for shucking and jiving, slipping and sliding, laying and playing. It's time to be about the father's business. And that's what this scripture said in the Amplified Bible. It says, go on about your business. Go on about your business. That's what time it is now. The kingdom business. That's what time it is now. Go about kingdom business. Operating for the kingdom. Speaking for the kingdom of God. Living for the kingdom of God. He said, go your way. That's the word for the day. He said, go your way. Go your way. And your way is his way. Your way is the straight and narrow way. Your way is the way of life. He said, I am. I am the truth. I am the way. See, I am the way. I am the truth. He said, I am the life. No man come to the Father but by me. I tell you, it's a blessed assurance we can have today in the midst of all this confusion. And it's going to get more confusing. It's going to get more confusing. Stop looking to Washington for answers. Not coming from there. You need to lift your eyes to the hills. That's what's coming. Your help. Your help. Your help comes from the Lord. That's where your help comes from. Not going to come from City Hall. It's going to come from the Lord. Not going to come from Raleigh. It's going to come from the Lord. He's the one made heaven and earth. And if he's in control of your life, he's going to work things together for your good. And the good news is, once you believe in Jesus Christ, you are then a partaker of eternal life, eternal 
everlasting life. Read John 3.16. You know what it said. God so loved the world. If you believe in him, you have, you have as a present possession everlasting life. So if this world, which it's going to do, gets burned up, you got another place. You got a place that he prepared for you. And that's good news. If you aren't saved today, let me tell you something. The Lord just gave me a question the other day. God is good. I said, God is good. He is good to all. Now, why, listen to me, listen to me. Why would you run from a good God? See, some of you out there watching this, you're running from God. You've been running your whole life. You think you're just going to run till you get old and messed up, and then you're just going to come limping up to God and want to give him your life. Why are you running from it now when you could be enjoying the goodness of God in the land of the living where God says, I don't care how much confusion is around you, live your life. I got you. I got you. My eyes on you. I even know the number. I've even numbered your hair on your head. That's how intimately acquainted I am with you. And you are much more. He said, not even one bird falls without me knowing it, but you are much more valuable than any bird. I got you. He said, I got you. Why do you want to keep on? Pray to God today in your own words and invite Jesus Christ. You know he's real. You know being saved is real. You're just running. You're running from God. Why are you running? I don't know why you're running from something good. The Bible says taste and see that the Lord is good. Won't you taste him? Won't you? Won't you? They say when you try everything, <coughs> try Jesus. Don't try everything. Just receive Jesus. Because everything else is going to fail. Everybody else is going to fail. He will never leave you. Once you get him in your life, he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. What's the word today? Go your way. Live your life. Take care of your business. Kingdom business. That's what time it is right now. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that those hear this word, hear it deep in their spirit. As we listen to the words recorded by the prophet Daniel, we know this is timely, timeless. And right now, we hear your spirit speaking to us. Even as we talk, Father, there are those who are sick in their bodies watching this. I pray that you would even heal the listeners supernaturally as they watch this by way of social media or internet. Touch bodies, heal bodies, deliver your people. You're a good God, and you promised that you would be our healer, and we believe it. We receive our healing. Those who need provisions, make a way for them, God. Make a way. You make a way for your people. You made a way for me. Yesterday morning, as I was out trying to buy some gas, how I was able to see the tanker truck pull up to the station. I pulled right in with it and was the third person in line. And when I finished, the line was almost a half a mile long. You good to your children, and you make ways where there seem to be no ways. Help your people, Father. Help your people, your sons, your daughters today as they cry out unto you. You good father. We thank you. You are our father. You are our daddy. And you take care of us. Bless your people today. Exceedingly abundantly above all we can even ask or think. And we thank you, Lord, for telling us today not to sit around afraid, but to go on and live and, and, and enjoy the life you have for us without fear even as we see confusion all around us. Thank you that you give us a peace that passes all understanding on the inside. In Jesus' name, amen. That's the word for this Sunday. God bless you. Don't forget the Thursday night message. God is speaking expressly in these last days. He's speaking on Thursday night just like he does on Sunday. And you can listen to it anytime, in the morning, in the evening, while you're riding in the car, anywhere. But you need to hear it. God bless you. Have a smile upon you till next time. This is Pastor Lawson. I love you. And ain't nothing you can do about it.